during the initial stages of business requirements gathering, um, we, were, we were finding that I think kind of what Will just alluded to with the lack of um, experience with CRMs that we weren't getting a ton of input from the business um, or we weren't getting the input that we felt like we should be getting. And what was happening was our technology folks were kind of filling the void. Um, and, and you know, we really decided uh, that we, we needed to stop doing that and, we, and had to force the business uh, into uh, defining the requirements themselves. And so, um, you know, by intentionally making the, the technology folks, you know, stop offering up suggestions or filling the void um, and with Will pressing the business and saying, you know, this is really something that we need to hear from you on that really helped move things along and and just kind of got the um, the business more actively engaged in the process. So that was, I, I would say, you know, the first uh, the first thing. Um, and I think the other challenge has been, and I think it continues to be, is just tempering expectations for what the initial product is going to end up as. Um, you know, both at the outset of the project overall, but then also more more recently, um, we've really had to had to uh, really you know restate or initially state, but then now restate that you know this isn't going to be all things to all people all at once. It's 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 going to be a journey. You know, the initial rollout is going to have, you know, a, a lot of the functionality that we want, but certainly not all of the functionality that we're going to be looking for. And so um, really, I think, um, you know, I think what kind of fueled that a little bit was during business requirements, we we were, you know, the no word wasn't in our, you know, vernacular, right? We weren't, we weren't saying that this is possible or this is not possible. We wanted to the, we didn't want to stifle that uh, requirements process, but we understood at the time that certain, you know, of those requirements were just not going to be viable for day one. And so, you know, so I think it was after the fact where I, there was a little consternation where people were like, well, wait a minute, you're telling me that what we just talked about uh, is not going to be available for, for the initial rollout. So I think that has just been a challenge. And I think it's going to continue to be a challenge as we go through the project. The more the team became aware of what was possible mm -hmm. um, within the CRM, the more often suggestions or quote unquote requirements started to come up that were not necessarily tied to our goals. The biggest <laughs> challenge was again that data extract. It was it should have been the easiest part and it was the hardest part. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but luckily, you know, with the help of tech advisors and just us keep asking questions and want us to figure them out, we were able to use those data extracts and the, the Starfish program to connect them and map them to bring them over into Creatio. Um, and using that Starfish program, we've been able to use it to uh, bring in other reports and data from other sources as well. So we're continuing to expand upon that. Another challenge, which it sounds like it's a maybe a, an industry standard, is working with those heavily siloed departments and finding better ways for them to interact and communicate with each other while building Creatio to fit their various needs and often overlapping needs and wants. You know, finding those case uses that you know work for all of them and seeing where we can split them up, you know, where they don't overlap well enough. Uh, but to get over that, we had a lot of uh, you know, regular department uh, specific meetings along with mixed department meetings, which we are continuing to do since we've gone live. We call it our Creatio Steering Committee. Um, with that, we've been working toward, you know, better communication, getting that continued feedback, and better agreements on how Creatio is going to be used. I think maybe one of the one of the biggest advantages of a CRM you know, in our organization as well, you know, we, we do have a ton of applications. Um, every vertical in our organization has their own set of applications that they're using. And the frontline members, or I should say the frontline employees are expected to just keep up with that, right? So they do have 15, 16 applications on their desktops and that's really hard to track. And so um, I think the CRM has the power to simplify the organization for those inbound teams. So for us, it's, it's those users at the service center or in the call center um, and our goal and our ultimate vision is to have one application 
on the desktop of our inbound teams. And that application is going to be the CRM. And that CRM should be the like, singular point of entry for that user and for that member to the rest of the organization, no matter how many other applications are out there, whether it's loyalty programs or it's marketing automation or it's loan applications or um, you know whatever else we end up coming up with in the organization, you know we want that to be in one application. Even you know as simple as phone integration, right? Being able to interact with a member, track the case, and call from the same application, like that is powerful and that is a value add, right? It's it's getting rid of even that dialer on the desktop has power, and so um, that's really where, where we're trying to go with the CRM. And I think that does lead to, as Eric was kind of talking about, that best in class member experience, where we want to focus on personalization and we want to make sure that the conversations and the touch points we have with members are valuable and it's not just I've got another problem because if every time you call your your credit union and say the only time I call them is when I have a problem well that's not really a good relationship I just had uh, at least in my view uh, the, the pace of techno uh, technological change in the industry but uh, you know for specifically consumers, uh, smaller financial institutions trying to keep pace with the big budgets of the big banks, um, you know, in a, in a technology capacity at least. And that's never, you're never going to keep pace with uh, the big banks. And so I think um, most smaller financial institutions understand that their service is a differentiator between them and the big banks and the CRM. Um, we heard from every, you know, group, uh, every institution on this panel that, uh, Creatio is the first CRM that their institution has has had, and so um, I do think that um, the CRM is really going to help us, uh, you know, further that differentiation. Right? It's not that the big banks don't have a CRM, but I think that we will we will probably be able to um, envision just much better service by making use of the CRM, um, and that will drive efficiencies for us, um, and and ultimately. You know, I, th I think that we just need to focus mostly on reducing friction for our members in their regular interactions with us, um, not, not when they have to call us, but just how they interact with our products, such that when they do have to call us for something, those are more value add conversations than I'm resolving an issue for you. I think, you know, as much as we can get away from the member having to call us because they have an issue, uh, the better you know we will be for it. And I think the CRM will really uh, help us get uh, in that direction. So as George mentioned, you know we do have e-learning program set up. Um, we have uh, it's like an informal role, but we have CRM ambassadors throughout the organization that are really power users of the CRM. They're advocates of the CRM. And they will take up a lot of those training duties as well within the departments. Um, you know, they've, they've got kind of specialization experience there. And so those kind of CRM, informal CRM ambassadors are very helpful to our ongoing training. But um, as we have broad reach uh, and, you know, penetration throughout the organization with our CRM, uh, we have the luxury of focusing on key departments at a time. As we're working on one particular department, we can focus on that department develop some enhancements for that department, train that department, and we really don't have to impact the rest of the organization. But as we do encounter changes that are system-wide, you know, we do find those, those changes where we have to retrain the entire organization. And then we start to lean on, you know, uh, you know organizational communication, sending out emails to at everyone.com, uh, you know, leveraging those e-learning, making sure those are mandatory, making sure people are going through those. Um, creating the one pagers that can be printed out and put on the desk of every single CRM user uh, and really just trying to make sure that we get the information out as much as possible. And we kind of hit that cadence with constant reminders to make sure that people are well prepared. So that way, when that change eventually hits on Monday morning, they're not suddenly surprised. They, they've got, you know, the documentation, they've got the FAQ, they've got the one pager that they can reference to kind of adapt to that change. Um, but we want the change to be not impactful. The hope is that with every change, it's an improvement in workflow and process. So even if it is different, hopefully it's less clicks or it's an easier process. And so the change isn't uh, you know, too much of a burden.